What pops into your mind when I say the word lunch? You're probably thinking a sandwich, cheeseburger and fry, soup and salad, taco Tuesday, chicken salad, pizza. Whatever it is, it needs to be something quick and easy. But 250 years ago, it was nothing like that. To a working man, lunch was the most important meal of the day. He couldn't go on without it. We just got done thinking about what happens with breakfast, and that made me think about lunch. And the perfect book for that is William Ellis's book from 1750, where he tells us all about the meals for laborers. What was life like for the working class in the 18th century? It's a question I ask myself because today, most people that we think of here in America are middle class, but there isn't quite that thing happening either in America or in Great Britain in the 18th century. Most people are working class what we would call maybe even low class or lower middle class. They're people doing very blue collar like jobs and they have a different kind of life than we do completely. They're working from dawn to dusk. And when you work hard like that, you have to eat in a different way than we certainly do today. I mean, most of us could probably skip two meals and not even really notice it. So we're talking here about the people who are working on farms, regular field workers. We're talking about blacksmiths and people that are doing those standard jobs, potters, ironsmiths, tailors. All these folks are working hard every day, six days a week. And so many jobs today, we commute. We might commute 10, 15 minutes or an hour to get to work. Most people in the 18th century are not doing that at all. They're working rather close to home or even in their home. So dealing with lunch is a totally different kind of concept. They don't have to go out to eat. They are right at their home. They're ready to eat there. Or sometimes the meals are brought out to them. They're field workers and the food is brought out to them so they don't have to take any major break in the day, but they can eat right there. So today we typically have these three meals in the day. We have a breakfast, we have a lunch, we have a dinner. That dinner being the large meal of the day, the one that's most filling. And these other ones are just sort of fillers to keep us from getting hungry until we get to dinner. But that's not what's typical in the 18th century. Yes, we're having something maybe very early in the morning and then we might start to do some work and then we'll have something like a breakfast. Then we'll work until the midday till about one o'clock and that's dinner. That's the major meal of the day. And then later on, much later on, maybe even after the sun has gone down, we have a light supper and then it's time for bed. So what are we eating in this larger midday meal, which they call their dinner? Well, if we dig into William Ellis's Country Housewife's Family Companion, we have a lot of references specifically to dinner. And they're working with families and workmen that work on the farm. And he does this great job all the way through the book in many different spots where he says, this will make a good dinner or that'll make a good dinner. Here on page 71, William Ellis gives us a great description of dinner. He says, at dinner time, which should always be at one o'clock, the victuals should be in the field. For it was the saying of a noble housewife that as the men expected it at that hour, if it was not brought accordingly, they would lag in their work and lose time in expecting it. Broad beans and bacon or pork one day and beef with carrots or turnips or cabbage or cucumbers or potatoes another day, and a plum pudding at wheat time harvest or a plain pudding in Lent harvest. Good dinner vittles. So it's fun, even as we dig through a book like this, William Ellis talks about all kinds of things that will work for a dinner. Some things that we would find rather strange. So it'll say something like a white pot, which we would definitely consider basically a sugary bread pudding. He would consider that the entire dinner or maybe just a large pudding, one of those boiled puddings like we think of as in the Christmas Carol with Charles Dickens on fire, right? So that could also be your dinner, your midday meal. They're usually just one dish and maybe shared within the entire family or all the workers at once. Things that we just wouldn't think of as really appropriate for lunch at all. 
Another great book for working class meals is the Primitive Cookery Cookbook done in 1767. And it's a collection specifically for meals for working class people, even this low class working people. And in the back, it's a list of 72 meals and they are all over the place. Something like oatmeal or green beans, uh, dumplings, which we've done here. Um, and many of them say, this will make a good meal, that this is good for the working class family. And many times, or basically all the time, they're talking about dinner here. They're talking about the main meal of the day, not breakfast. In past videos, we have talked about some of these same sorts of things. The Benjamin Franklin meal, which is the bread and cheese and something like water. Sometimes that's breakfast. Uh, many times that is a typical lunchtime meal or dinner time. We also have something that, again, we've talked about that would be breakfast, which would be oatmeal, a porridge. Yep, that could certainly be your dinner time or even something like a milk porridge, which is just milk with bread crumbed up in it and sort of heated up, which not too many people I think eat today. <laughs> As we dig into what's written here, the meals are large, so it seems that Dinner has a lot more to do with how big the meal is, how it's supposed to get you through the day, rather than exactly the type of food that we're eating. Most of the references here with William Ellis, he's talking about field workers. And whether it's breakfast or dinner, those meals are brought right out into the field for them so that they can eat and then get back to work. But a lot of these other workers, maybe they're a blacksmith or you know, some other kind of worker in town, they are so close to home, they can take a break, they can go home, the meal's already been prepared for them, they can eat and then get back to work. So it gives them a nice little break during the day. They don't have to worry about fast food or doing any great quantity of commuting. The main dish we're gonna do today is the one right out of the middle of the section here. It's beef with carrots and potatoes. Many times in the 18th century, this would just be boiled. Boiled beef with potatoes and carrots. That doesn't sound so appetizing. So another way where they would cook them in the 18th century is to cook them in a Dutch oven. We would call it a pot roast and it is so good. Our dish of beef, potatoes, and carrots is rather simple. We're gonna take our beef and do a little bit of spicing with it. Salt and pepper, rub that in. You could even put a little nutmeg on it if you want to. And we're going to sear this in our Dutch oven. A little bit of oil and make sure to brown all the sides of this wonderful beef. Once that's done, we can put in our sliced carrots and potatoes. Add some water in that. You wanna come almost up to the top of the meat. Put the lid on that and it goes into our oven, or in this case, we're gonna put coals above and below it, and it needs to be cooked at about 350 degrees for an hour or two. The more I dig, the more I'm kind of caught off guard, but the fact that there's so much variety here, but many, many circumstances, these dishes are meat dishes. These are fairly lowly people, really. They're, they're not even kind of middle-class folks, but meat is available for many, many of these dishes. And while it might not be a high-class cut of meat, meat is on the table. Even the dish we're cooking today doesn't need to be some incredibly wonderful cut of beef. It can be a fairly inexpensive cut and the way it's cooked still turns out wonderfully tender. Yes, lunch for us is something simple. We'll get it from a fast food restaurant or maybe we'll bring our food in, but it's just something to get us through the hungry spot in the middle of the day. In the 18th century, it is the most important meal. It is the biggest meal. It's basically usually just one dish like this, meat and vegetables all cooked together. Maybe it's one thing or the other, but it is the most substantial meal of the day. This smells so good. It is such a quick one pot meal. The beef, the vegetables all cooked together. And well, let's try it out. Hmm. Cooked to perfection. This is probably <laughs> the very best lunch, whether today or 250 years ago.